Deadly Tarantula Girl bringing you another venomous video today. So, tonight I will be showing you one of my albino Naya Kayathawas. Ooh, she sounds excited. So, do have my locking bucket from tongs.com. And those buckets are super handy. I like that they have the hook on the top for easy transport. This is the hook that I like to use to unscrew the bucket. And then I actually like to use the field hook for handling because it's a little bit longer and I can actually uh, push the log over and stuff like that if I need to. So, this animal is one that I reproduced about two years ago. And she is a lovely little lady. As I said, she is an albino Nyakayatawa monocle cobra. I think this is probably one of my, I don't know, she might be a 2017 or a 2018 baby. The, the albinos in this species vary quite a lot. They usually yellow out quite a lot, but this line that I'm working with actually stays kind of nice and peachy, which I like, I prefer. One of the tricks I have for breeding this species is that I do actually cool mine. I know people in Houston that have successfully bred them without cooling, but they're in a very different area than I am. And so that may depend a lot on where you live, as you would imagine, because the seasons, the temperature, the humidity, the barometric pressure all vary a lot depending on where you live. Many people think Texas is all just dry and brown, but Texas is a massive state that spans lots of life zones. Houston is much more tropical than where I live in West Texas, and so I do still cool my animals to kind of, well, I'm not sure why they need it, but I was not able to reproduce them without cooling them. And so once I began doing that, then they began reproducing for me. In the collection that I've had, my monocles seem to only want to reproduce about every two years. And so I let them pair and breed and lay if, if it comes naturally. And otherwise I, I don't push them. They're a fascinating, beautiful species, one that I really enjoy working with. As I think I mentioned in my initial Kayathawa video, this is a species I enjoy working with because they're not overly aggressive. They're one that I feel like communicates pretty clearly. They often will hiss and hood before they bite, although that's certainly not guaranteed. This is an animal that can stand upright and when they grow to full size that can be quite intimidating. They're nowhere near as big as a king, but still not an animal you want to be bitten by. They do have a lethal venom. It is very dangerous. You would definitely need to be treated as quickly as possible. Our first aid kit has venom locks and then we would immediately go to the closest emergency room in seek of anti-venom. You would need treatment for the envenomation as well as making sure that you don't get any kind of bacterial infection as with most animal bites, including human. So this girl will probably be large enough to breed next year although she may choose to reproduce next year or she might wait till the year after. You never know. Keeping monocles is definitely not a beginner species, but it is one that I enjoyed keeping after I had many, many years under my belt. I did work with Venomous for a long time 
outside of my personal collection before I be attempted to begin keeping on my own. And I never work with these animals by myself. I always make sure that I have two or three other people with me before I work with venomous or large constrictors. You never know what can happen, so safety first. Hope you guys enjoyed this Cobra video. Go ahead and drop your questions and comments below. Hope to see all of you guys at the upcoming NARBC in Arlington, Texas, and I'll see you next time.